Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Cinema Rogues. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Uh, we we took a month off. Um, I guess I guess to uh, to get the um, the elephant in the room out the way. Uh, we we both had some uh, some deaths in the family and 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 needed some time off and 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 to kind of reset and regroup and. Um, especially coming into this episode about WandaVision, um, which deals a lot with how people handle grief and, and things of that nature. And so, uh, we took some time off and, 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 but now we're back and, and I found that writing the notes for this show, I was way happy to be back. Yep. It's definitely some, some rough stuff and happy to be back in the studio, our respective studios. Right. Yeah. It's not like we share a studio. Nope. Not yet anyway. Um okay, so <laughs> oh yeah. no, are we gonna you gonna are we gonna make a studio that comes from Fort Worth to Austin? Yeah, we're gonna put it like as like a stop on the on the bullet train. There you go. That'd be yeah. good. I'd do that. Right. Um yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> my okay, so for for our listeners, my my dad passed away in, in, in late March. Um, and he, being his only child, he left me all of his worldly possessions and, and, and money and stuff. All his stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and some of that, some of that includes enough money to, to rebuild his house. Um, and, and, and I think we're going to end up moving out there. And part of my plan in moving out there is to build like a full studio. Um, well, not like a full, like separate building studio but a room that is designated as the as a studio for for both playing uh musical instruments and recording you know podcasts and youtube videos if you don't use the garage you can always soundproof the entire garage and do that dude we're thinking about building like a uh um a metal building off the side that's going to be a workshop slash garage nice um, and then I don't know what we're going to do with the garage as it exists. Cause it's kind of, it's a one car garage, but it's a little bit wide. So you could like squeeze two cars in there. So it's not really a great space. Yeah. But I don't know. I want to get, I think we're going to end up, I think adding on to the house and, and in the process of doing that and building it out. Cause I, if, if I'm going to move out there to do my dad's old house, then, uh, I want to stay out there. I mean, it's the house that I grew up in. I don't, I, I don't have any intention of ever selling it. Right. Um, so if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to build out, you know, any kind of dream room that I want basically, yeah. uh, which is a studio there. I want a, uh, uh, a theater room with no windows. That way you can watch movies for this show. Exactly. It'd be great. Um, but now into our regular housekeeping, um, go check out board game barbarians. Andrew has been, uh, you know, pumping out those shows once a month. Still doing that pretty great uh you can check out my youtube channel uh, i'm gonna start streaming stuff again soon uh that's sidetail studios on youtube and twitch and as always check out retro warriors that's probably how you found us anyway but go check them out if you don't know what that is it is a retro video game podcast hosted by a couple of good friends of ours and um in my opinion the best retro video game podcast it's good stuff that's its tagline I retro wish. warriors it's good stuff it's good stuff. Oh, man. So uh, let's get into movies we've seen since the last time we talked. This isn't a comprehensive list because it's been like five or six weeks. Um, I have been watching a lot of the Great British Baking Show. Uh, yeah. my, my girlfriend's gotten really into that, and it's got me wanting to bake again. Um, I don't know. It's, it's one of those like low-key... Uh, low investment kind of shows that, that just makes you feel good. And everybody there, like it's a baking competition, but it's a British baking competition. So everybody's rooting for everybody else. Nobody's like really mean about things. Yeah. My wife puts it on in the background whenever she needs just noise. It's good stuff. One of, uh, I think it's season six. There's this girl named Ruby who looks exactly like my sister. It's real, real weird. I weird. even sent, uh, um, uh, like a video of her to to my sister, and she was like, "That's that's British me. That's weird." <laughs> um, other than that, uh, I've also been getting into. Um, I wrote down lady soccer, and I feel like that's like almost derogatory, and I don't mean it to be, but that's soccer what I for ladies. Yeah, but that's what I call it is lady soccer because it's like a distinctly different sport I, than like I men's think, soccer. I think you would say extent. women's soccer is. 
It is. It is. It is women's soccer. It is the National Women's Soccer League uh, is what we've been watching. They just started up their preseason tournament uh, heading into the new season. And and my my girlfriend played soccer like growing up uh, in high school. She was going to get a scholarship to go to college, but eventually just kind of quit soccer because she was tired of of, of the commitment and, 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 you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and she's basically tired of busting her ass every day to play a sport where she couldn't make money in the end kind of yeah. thing. Um, and, and so she's always been a fan. Um, and I'm, I'm a fan of, of soccer in general, like men's soccer. Um, but my biggest complaint with it is when the players are like constantly trying to draw calls and I'm always like flopping on the ground and stuff. Right, and they're hurt, but they're not hurt, but they're pretending they're hurt. Right, and the women don't do that for for whatever reason. It's it's become a thing in the men's game um, to to you know try and eke out an advantage through through phantom calls or whatnot, and and the women just like muscle through that shit and like it's great. You know, you know, you get a flow to the game. It's it's in my experience, watching women's soccer is 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 much better than men's soccer. So. Um, we decided to, to kind of bite the bullet cause they are, uh, well, it's on Paramount plus, which we subscribe to already Yeah, for star Trek. And, uh, like I said, they're starting their preseason tournament. Um, and then they're going to go into the full season this summer. And we decided, you know what, we're going to watch this whole tournament, figure out which team like we want to root for. And then we'll follow that team when the season starts. Nice. So it's been, it's been real fun watching that. Did you hear, I read something today that it's not anytime soon, but NHL is coming to HBO Max? I did. I did. I did read that. Um, I thought that was something you would be interested in. I am. What I what I really, really hope is that at some point, some paid streaming service, whatever it is, I will give them money, broadcast every NHL game. Like right now, they're on regional sports networks, and the only way to get them is to have an active subscription to a cable package that has the regional sports network and to make it, to make it worse, the regional sports networks changed hands at the beginning of March this year. So it went from Fox sports to Bally sports like Bally from like Bally Midway or Bally's, uh, workout facilities or whatever they're called. Bally's gym. Um, they, uh, they, they bought the rights after, um, Disney bought Fox uh, Disney sold off Fox's regional sports networks to Bally. Well, since Bally doesn't have any contracts with any of the uh, streaming services, mm-hmm. um, they're like like Hulu Live and, and YouTube TV and things like that, right. uh, Fubo, etc. The the ones that do offer live sports regional packages don't offer Bally's because they haven't negotiated those contracts yet. Lame. So HBO, it sounds like, is trying to negotiate that. Hopefully. Hopefully that's how that works out. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, other than that is movies that it looks like we have uh, both watched. So yeah. Mortal Kombat is, uh, is okay. I mean, we've I had some fine. discussions about it in the, in the Discord channel, but um, it's, I don't know. Some people seem to hate it. I enjoyed it for what it was. I don't think it was any better or worse than the original one. Um, uh, um, I thought like special effects wise, it was better, <laughs> but I'll give you that. Um, but I, I, you know, there were some people on a discord server saying that, uh, it took itself too seriously and I just didn't get that impression at all. I didn't either because of the, the whole like beating someone and then them personally saying fatality or whatever, like, right. Or flawless victory. I watched it with Justin and um, the whole time he was waiting for like pussy, like to show up, <laughs> <laughs> like he was waiting for that to just happen at some point. Uh, that's why he doesn't like it. He was secretly. That's mad why he that hated it. Happen. He it was yeah, it was mad that it didn't happen. Nah, I I I wanted Sub Zero to like rip somebody's spine out. That didn't happen either. We got a couple like cool fatalities, but nothing nothing like skull ripping the spine, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I am on board with the fact that Johnny Generic was super boring. Oh, the main character? Yeah. I don't know why he was there. I I don't either. He's not a character in Mortal Kombat. They didn't need to make a character. Like, they could have just used... I don't know, whatever. We're not not reviewing that show. (laughs) Yeah. That movie. 
Yet. Uh, you didn't yet. want it to. I don't know. We could. Uh, I don't Godzilla I don't versus know. Kong? Let's talk about that for half a second. I liked that movie. I loved that movie. It that was, movie was good. It was really good. Um, I really enjoyed um, the, I guess, the different uh, fighting techniques that having a humanoid monster brought along, I suppose. Right. Right. By having Kong. Right. Because in the previous Godzilla movies, the monsters were, uh, well, like quadrupeds, mostly. Or, right. or flying monsters, or like your traditional sort of uh, lizard versus lizard, you know, monster mashup kind of thing. Right. And having having a, a basically a pro- protagonist monster who has human features and understands, you know, language to a certain extent and fights like a humanoid would, uh, I think lent a lot to that movie. And we don't want to do any spoilers or anything, so we're not really going to get super into it, but it was a... It was a fun movie. I will say that even if you like are upset for whatever reason, because I, I I heard some people that were like upset about this movie, um, and even if you're like upset at the concept, it's a it's a fun, just a dumb fun movie. Yeah, it really is. I did not like all of the uh, Millie Bobby Brown sections just because I thought they were kind of pointless. Yeah, I I have a um. A similar problem to her as as you you have with Johnny Generic in, in in Mortal Kombat, and the reason I call him Johnny Generic obviously is because he's generic, but also because and we he forgot his just, name. He should have just been Johnny Cage. Yeah, and I forgot his name. It's like Cole something. Who knows? No one knows. No one knows, and we can't look it up. <laughs> that that would be cheating. Yeah, I refuse to. But yeah, no, her scenes. You know, they they were just. Uh, they were filler. They they were extra, and they didn't really lend anything to you know the the major conflicts that were going on. Right. Uh, you know, all that really ended up happening to her was she got into the middle of you know the rubble at one point. But right. I mean, they kind of set up um, with her some end story stuff that I'm mm-hmm. not going to get into. Um, I did like uh, Brian Tyree Henry. Is always enjoyable for me to watch. I think he's I forget. Sure. Which one was he? Uh he's the conspiracy theorist that she's palling around with. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And then the uh New Zealand kid also is happy to see him in more stuff. Yeah, I did like him a lot. Other other than that, what else did we watch? Not together, but separate, but the same. Uh Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh man, it's so good. Oh dude, that's I, I, uh, I was about to say that's my favorite Marvel TV show so far, but it's really close with WandaVision. I uh, know. I liked I liked Falcon and Winter Soldier better. But we'll get into that because, spoilers, it's our next show. Um, it is our next show. I don't agree with some of the character decisions they made in the last episode. <laughs> we'll get into that. Well, next, yeah. uh, maybe at next episode, if we remember. Right. Um, And then the last movie that I watched that guy didn't was Nobody with Bob Odenkirk. Oh man, I keep. I wanted to watch that. That's the one where he's uh like just a regular dude who kind of goes nutso or some shit. Or I like, mean, it's basically like Bob mm-hmm. Odenkirk, John Wick. Yeah, and his oh. like family get like messed up or something, and then he feels bad about not doing something. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, know. that's that's kind of what they put in the trailer, but uh, no. Oh. No spoiler. I don't want to really talk about it. I, I thought it was uh it was a fun another fun enjoyable movie um that was kind of just weird plot wise. But uh I would not I will say this. Uh I would not rent it for $20. Okay. Uh but I'd probably pay 10 bucks for it. I I remember I read a thing uh, an article about it uh, that had an interview with the director I believe it was like the article was about how Bob Odenkirk was just like amazing or whatnot but right oh yeah he got in like great shape for th- I will say this I would go see it in theaters even though I've seen it at home nice but I would not rent it for twenty dollars yeah from what I understand like he just like came in and then like fucking went for it every take it's good man yeah yeah. Yeah, I heard it was good. All right. Uh, well, let's get into some news real quick here. 
uh, King of the Hill revival talks have started again. Um, set to be 15 years later. Uh, so I suppose all, all the same characters, just what are they doing now? Um, yeah. well, I suppose not what Luann and her boyfriend. Yeah. Her boyfriend. Well, yeah. The actress that played Luann is no longer living, right? Yeah. Brittany Murphy died and Tom Petty died. Yep. So I, I would assume they're not going to recast those, but who knows? I, I'm sure it's early talks, but, but they, they are talking about it, which is kind of cool. I'd like to hear Hank Hill's take on modern society. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. Um, mainly with like, did you watch the Rocco's modern life remake? I did. Yeah. I had a, I I thought that movie not, I mean, I guess it was a movie tried too hard to be like, Oh, we're on social media now. And now oh, look at this. We got the, I don't know. They just, they tried too hard to be relevant and it just flopped for me. Hmm. Unlike the Invader Zim remake or continuation that was great. There was an Invader Zim continuation? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Oh. Go check it out. It's I like might have to do that. Hour or, two, hour or two long. So Netflix is adding a category for films lasting 90 minutes or less, but only in UK and Ireland. That's weird. Right? Like I, That seems like a cool feature. I'd like that, because then I know how much time I have. Right. I don't know. Uh, WB shuts down rumors that the Zack Snyder verse may be resurrected. Um, around the time that the Snyder cut came out, there were a lot of, uh, I mean, it did really well. It's, um, became, it became kind of an event almost. There were, there were a bunch of people that were, well, I, I guess the, the critical reception was good. The audience reception was great. Um, so it, it led to rumors of, of them, you know, giving him, uh, you know, more movies and, and more control to, uh, of the DCEU, um, to, to continue that story since everybody seemed to love it. uh, But uh, they said, no, we're not doing that. Well, there was also an official HBO trailer that was released on YouTube called the Snyderverse. That was wonder woman one, Batman versus Superman and Superman. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that was released recently. Like, why would they do that? I don't know. Cause HBO doesn't know what they're doing sometimes. It's true. Uh, but one thing they do know is when Tenet's coming out on HBO Max. Oh boy! We hey, May first. Um, so that will be coming out uh like two days ago, basically thought, by the time we release said, this. I thought you said me first. <laughs> yeah, it's coming just to my account. I paid exclusive rights for it. Um, and then speaking of HBO Max and WB movies, uh, WB movies will no longer be coming to HBO Max on day one, starting in twenty twenty two. Uh, Warner Brothers has reached a deal with Cineworld, the owner of Regal Cinemas, for a 45-day exclusive theatrical window starting in 2022. Uh, no word yet on if they have uh, are, are working on negotiations with other chains. Uh, we only know about Regal Cinemas at this point. But what this means is that uh, Warner Brothers films will, uh, will be in theaters for at least 45 days before they can appear on streaming or video-on-demand platforms, including HBO Max. Yeah, I bet there's they have to be doing other studios, like deals with other studios. You would think. Um, what was the big one that was super pissed off at HBO? AMC and yeah. Cinemark. Yeah, AMC. So I assume, unless just Warner Brothers doesn't want to work with AMC anymore. You would think. You would think they would work that out, but we'll see. Um, speaking of, I suppose it is, uh, Warner brothers, uh, Pierce Brosnan is cast as Dr. Fate in the black Adam movie. Gross. Why, why gross? I don't like Pierce Brosnan. Why, why don't you like Pierce Brosnan? He's an all right actor. There are way better choices that I couldn't tell you off the top of my head right now, but, uh, well then your argument is invalid, sir. All right. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch would be a better Dr. Fate. Well, I mean, Pierce Brosnan's old, so it seems like they want an older Dr. Fate. Oof. Uh, has there been any official word on if uh, Henry Cavill's going to be in, in that movie? I have not heard anything, no. Hmm. I know he was he was rumored to appear, and I know that or I had read that one of the reasons that they wanted to recast Superman at one point was because Henry Cavill didn't want to cameo in... Uh, 
Shazam. But uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's turning around because I, I I remember reading rumors about about him doing a cameo, whether it was um, in Black Adam uh, or or maybe a Shazam too. But either way, it I seems mean like- there there are apparently rumors of remaking Superman already with Michael B. Jordan as Superman. Just I wouldn't. Rumors. I wouldn't be opposed to that by any means, but I, I would, would rather see Henry Cavill or have like two different Superman universes or whatever. Yeah, that'd be fine. I would be okay with two two different super. I like Michael B. Jordan. He's a great actor. Yeah, he is. Uh, oh, Disney Plus price is going to increase to seven ninety nine a month. Yep, right after all of their uh, all the people that bought three year subscriptions through their D twenty three service, like I did. Mm-hmm. We got three years for like four dollars, and now we got to go up to like eight bucks. Oh, are they increasing it for you too? You didn't I mean, pay it all up front. Af- after the three years is over. Ah, well, see, you're fine. Well, I mean, the three years is almost over. Has it been uh, Has it been out that long already? I think so. Wow, okay. I don't know. Has it? I it's don't been a know. while. It's been at least a year. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> um, and uh, final bit of news, the Oscars happened. Go look it up. I, I did not pay attention to it at all. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> We're a movie podcast and neither of us cared about the Oscars. Uh, I don't know. Man. Oscars are always so like fanfare and like, ugh, who cares? Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I, I know that there were some historical, uh, or excuse me, historic Oscar victories for, for women and people of color. Um, uh, I think in director and, and best picture. Um, but I, I couldn't tell you for sure. I just remember sort of reading like seeing some of the headlines um, on Monday. Well, maybe we should take a break from doing stuff and do an Oscars episode next time. Well, we could do that. Maybe Just be a semi heavy research. Yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah. We'll let that. Let that let, yeah. Let's do that. That'll work. So if you want to hear what happened at the Oscars and you didn't pay attention like us, wait till next episode. We'll do the research for you. Aha. As as we completely schedule our podcasts on the fly on the show, that's, that's what you wanted roll. to hear was housekeeping in the middle of a show. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now that we're done with housekeeping news and just being generally random, let's get into our topic. WandaVision. Yeah. yeah. Um synopsis, Wanda Maximoff and Vision have wacky antics in sitcom style. That's yeah. that's my spoiler free synopsis because that's pretty, all i could come up with pretty good spoiler free right <laughs> like there's not much to talk about in this that is spoiler free um just by the nature of the show and the way that it was um presented and advertised but, yeah it's going to be pretty quick as far as the non-spoiler section um as far as release info uh the first episode came out in january 15th of this year the series finale uh was march 5th of this year and it is um, confirmed to be a series finale. It was a, a uh, one shot series, um, series that is bridging the gap between uh, Avengers Endgame and um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Which I can't wait for. No joke. Um, the director for this was was Matt Shackman. Uh, there were there were several writers. I didn't uh, didn't write them all down, but each episode had uh, seemed to have at least one unique writer. Um, the leads for the show: uh, Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff, Paul Bettany as Vision, uh, and Catherine Hahn as Agnes, their uh, seemingly nosy neighbor at the uh, beginning. Um, she's one one of the characters that you get to know uh, pretty well right off the bat. Um, in supporting roles, you had Tiona Paris as Monica Rambeau, uh, Randall Park as Jimmy Wu, and Kat Dennings as Darcy Lewis. I oh, mean, love me some Randall Park. Hi. Anything he's in, for whatever reason, like he's like Brendan Fraser for me. Like, yeah, I uh, I like him as Jimmy Wu. Um, I don't know that I can think of him off the top of my head in anything else, but uh, uh, I know in- that I've seen him in other things. The dad and fresh off the boat. Uh, he played King John Ill in the interview. Oh yeah, Kim Jong Un, one of the two. That's good. 
Well, yeah, he's he's great. He also makes a brief appearance in the office and community. Um, nice. But, yeah, what a what a funny guy. Uh, critical response was ninety two percent on Rotten Tomatoes, eighty one percent audience score, and Metacritic is a little lower, uh, seventy seven um, critic score, seven point on the user side. Well, fuck them. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess uh, light review, spoiler free. Uh, I thought it was great and engaging. It started off a bit slow with the sitcom format, um, but it did a, a decent job of weaving in the larger narrative before it broke wide open in episode four. Um, to say to say nothing of, of the content of of what happens, um, ju- just know that if if you're starting to watch it and you're like, man, this is slow. I don't know if I want to like you know power through it or whatnot. Um, it's, it's, it's well worth getting to, uh, the end of episode four, at least. Yeah. And I said, what guy said, or it felt like it took some time to find its groove, but once it found it, I was waiting for more each episode. Uh, I was just waiting every week for it to come out. So definitely, uh, like I said, a little bit slow, but got its hooks in you. Yeah, it turned into a back. like uh, day one watch for me after like the the second yeah. or third episode. Whatever, every, every Friday or whatever, whenever it came out. Yeah, it was like I was waiting for my girlfriend to get home so we could immediately turn it on. Same thing for the Falcon and Winter Soldier. See, I didn't have well, Falcon and Winter Soldier. I didn't get to that point until like the last two episodes, I guess. Um, but that was mainly because they started posting like spoiler memes like immediately that day. Oh yeah, I had a big spoiler the day of on the last episode, and I was very sad. Yeah, it's, damn you, internet. Yep, right. Damn you, Gamespot. They're the ones that are like, oh, by the way, this is happening now. Oh wow, really? Yeah, like they like the day of the episode that it came out, they spoiled like the ending in a title by giving some other stuff away that I won't get into because I don't want to spoil it for people that haven't seen it yet. So, all right then. I'll tell you after the show if you remind me, but okay. Um, maybe I will. Maybe um, will. so would you suggest that people watch this? Yes, is <laughs> if you have Disney Plus, and if you don't get a free trial and and watch it, and then also go watch Falcon and Winter Soldier during your free trial. Yeah, I would. Um, at this point, I think it is fair to say that in in my opinion anyway that Disney Plus is worth at least a month investment to yeah. watch all of the shows even if you don't have a free trial it's it's worth the the month to pay for it yeah i mean at this point it's 7.99 or whatever like right throw down your $8 if that's all you want just cancel it after that yep the beauty uh, of not having contracts yeah that is the nice thing about streaming services um uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, go check it out. Um, if you haven't yet and then come back here for, for spoilers, um, because, uh, you don't want to listen to any of the rest of this episode. I, I, there, there is too much to spoil. Um, that, that would be, that would take away from the experience of, of watching the show and discovering it for yourself. Yep. But, uh, let's get into spoilers. Let's do it. Spoiler zone. Spoiler zone. Um. So this, I my notes here are really just kind of bullet points. Um, which usually they are, but they're a little bit more in depth. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to talk about, just in general, is the way that the show handled grief. Um, I thought it was it was really well done. Um, from 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 from, from many angles. Um. You had, uh, for those that don't know for whatever reason, um, Wanda Maximoff has gone through a lot of loss in her life in, in the MCU. Um, her parents were killed when she was a kid, um, and she was stuck under the rubble for days, if not weeks. Yeah, every, they, they say it in the show. That. Um, you know, with a ticking bomb that is uh, could go off at any moment. Uh, so she got to deal with that. Um, a Stark bomb. A Stark bomb. She's experimented on by Hydra, given her powers through the Mind Stone. 
Um, you know, and then, and then her brother dies, uh, in, in Avengers age, age of Ultron. Um, and then she falls in love with vision and vision dies in front of her twice. Yeah. Fun times. Fun times. So she is, and, oh, and then she gets, um, fucking blipped or whatever. What, what do they call it? I think they call it blipped. The yeah. Blip. The blip. Um, so and then has to come back five years later to a world that is completely changed and doesn't have, you know, this, this, this person robot that she's fallen in love with. Um, and the, the show goes through, you know, exploring, um, sort of her, her acceptance of it. It's, um, uh, how to put it like each, not each episode necessarily, but you can see it through like weaving through each of the episodes that, you know, she goes through all of the, you know, quote unquote traditional stages of grief, um, you know, from, from denial to anger and, and et cetera, et cetera. And finally to, through, 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 to acceptance. Right. Um, and, and, um, you know, a, a big part of that is, is, you know, her confronting it within herself. She does the work. Right. Um, I think some of it comes from, from, um, what's her face? Agatha, um, you know, spurring her try, cause she's trying to unlock her, her Scarlet witch powers or whatnot. Right. Um, but, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, this was the Wanda Maximoff's journey through her grief to, to, to come out the other side and be the, the person that she, you know, is going to be going Scarlet forward. Witch. Yeah. And so it's, it was really it was really neat seeing seeing the way that they dealt with that and you know she had some good talks with 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 Vision in there and and um, one of the and it's funny because it's not ju- it wasn't just it's not just death that she's that she's dealing with right I mean that is sort of a a, a common thread in her life right. um, you know and she constructs this entire uh, fake reality around herself. Um, to, to go and live the life that she had imagined living with vision. Right. So, you know, with, with the kids, um, and the house and, and, and just, uh, the neighbors and the job and neighbors and the job and just living in that reality. And at the, at the end of it, you know, what she ultimately has to do is, is let go of all of that. And, And part of letting go of all that, uh, was, was, um, you know, letting go of this family that she had built for herself. Right. And, and, you know, as a, as a divorced parent, that's, uh, that's fucking rough, man. Uh, that, that got to me when she was, uh, when she and vision were saying goodnight to their kids. Um, and she was, you know, like the, 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 the hex was, was collapsing, you know, she was collapsing it. Um, yeah. and, and she, you know, she, she was basically sitting there and just enjoying, uh, you know, a last moment of, of this life that she had created, um, you know, with her kids, knowing that it was it was going to go away and it was going to change, and and I, you know, very distinct distinctly remember um, you, the 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 night before my wife moved out or my ex wife moved out, excuse me, um, doing doing the same thing, like relishing in our bedtime routine with the kids, um, and just you know knowing that that was going to be the last time, and it was it was rough. And it's it, it was neat to see that in in the show and 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 to make that connection and to to have it reflected in 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 a piece of media, I guess. Yeah, well, that's nice. I didn't I didn't have quite the same experience, obviously, because I've not been through uh, that experience personally. Um, but you know, definitely the feeling of loss and how she dealt with it, or or how how it came through. Like I could see that. Uh, and you know, it's well, and, and it, it is, you know, and, and again, speaking of, 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 you know, like personal loss, it's, it's, uh, uh, like going through this has been really, you know, me reflecting on, on my feelings with, 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 with my dad passing away and, and, you know, really confronting the, the feelings that, I, that I've had surrounding that. Um, and this, show was over before that happened, but, but I've gone yeah. back and kind of revisited for, for this, for this episode. And, and that was, that was a big part of, of, of why I needed a break from it. Cause it was just, it's, it's, it was, it was too fresh, but, um, but it, it's, 
Yeah, again, it's it's always nice to see other people uh, or, or representations of grief and not being, you know, afraid of death, I suppose, because death seems sort of taboo in our culture. Right. Um, so it was cool to see something uh, taking it head on. Um, but let's talk about Agatha. Speaking of Agatha, that's where I wanted to go next. Um, okay. So I didn't mention it, uh, in, in the non-spoiler part, because even just saying Agatha at this point is a spoiler, right? Right. Um, your the, her nosy neighbor, um, uh, I forgot her Agnes. name already. Agnes turns out to be Agatha Harkness. Um, which uh, I think that reveal was in episode four five or six maybe and Agatha Harkness uh, in the comics from my understanding is you know is a basically just a, a, an old witch and a uh, well no in the comics she is she's more powerful right in I don't I don't know Wanda comics or Scarlet Witch comics super well I know that she is like basically the only thing I really know about her is that she's the second most powerful uh person yeah aside from scarlet witch right no scarlet witch is the is the most powerful person no uh agnes is not the second it's captain marvel that is like the second most powerful Ah. um but yeah scarlet witch is the most powerful or what either the first or second most powerful superhuman i can't remember who the most powerful one is off the top of my head uh, but I loved her reveal um, just because it, they had set it up with, and, and I'm talking about these like super out of order. Like now that I'm thinking about it, like I, I had them in order of things that were interesting to me, but like mm-hmm. to talk about Ag- Ag- Agatha, you kind of have to talk about Evan Peters showing up. Right. Right. Uh, so for great, those that, way. that don't know, Evan Peters played Quicksilver in uh, the, the X-Men Fox, universe, the Fox, the Fox X-Men. movies. Right. Um, and uh, he shows up in this as the same character, Quicksilver, uh, in uh, Scarlet, which is Wanda's, um, you know, fake world. And so it appeared to be, or, or what the assumption was across the internet was that Evan Peters showing up as Quicksilver was the start of the melding of the Fox and, uh, MCU Fox universe and MCU. Right. Right. Um, but it turned out to just be a red herring and it was, you know, Agatha, you know, fucking with, um, Wanda. Yeah. More or less. Um, so I, I thought that was just, that was funny. And I enjoyed the way that, that Evan played, uh, Pietro, um, he played him, you know, with a, with a Brooklyn accent like he has in in the Fox universe. He also he's basically like the cousin Jesse of the show, or Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Uncle Jesse, yeah, yeah, cousin Jesse. Uh, it was good. Um, but but so anyway, a- Agatha's reveal. Um, she had this like really super catchy th- song called uh, "It Was Agatha All Along." Um. And it showed her, you know, behind the scenes manipulating, you know, the events of, of what was going on. And, and, and really, um, a lot of the strangest net strangest that that you saw in the episodes leading up to that were, were her doing. Yeah. Can we talk about the music for like five seconds? Sure. Just like how good the music was just all around for each of the, the, I mean, it set the tone for each episode, um, and set the tone for the time period that you were in. And they just did a phenomenal job doing all of that. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I mean, that kind of goes into, to the, the, the sitcom format talk, um, where they, they basically progressed through eras of sitcom. It was kind of decades, yeah. but I think they skipped like a 15 a years few. at one point. Yeah. yeah. But they started out in a, um, uh, Dick Van Dyke style show. Yeah, uh, and the music again. The the intro was fucking spot on, like uh, very much uh, evocative of Dick Van Dyke, uh, the Dick Van Dyke show. Um, and then they went into to Bewitched uh, style yep. show, or that era of 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 sitcom, 
and they had like the whole animated intro um with with care with cartoon or cartoon characterizations of 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 wanda and vision and i think next what was what was after that was uh the brady bunch yeah they did that and then they did like malcolm in the middle yeah that's where they skipped that's right because that was my thought was because like the brady bunch is like 70s yeah and then i don't remember there being any 80s or i guess malcolm in the middle was 90s to me malcolm in the middle seems like in the aughts but I, I think really I think they they used it for the '90s because I think it spanned both those. I feel like it. I don't know off the top of my head, but I think it went into the aughts. But it started in the '90s. Yeah, and then was there only one other episode after that? Uh, the the Malcolm, not Malcolm in the Middle, the uh, the 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 Family Show. Family Show. Oh my God! What is the name of that stupid show with Modern uh, Family? Modern Family. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, their last their last sitcom one was was Modern Family style, um, which she did a uh, she being uh, Elizabeth um, Olsen. Uh, Olsen, thank you, um, did a great job of channeling the uh, the 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 actress the the mom from 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 Modern Family. I've never watched Modern Family, so I have no idea. Oh, man, <laughs> I'll that's take a your pretty, word. It's for a pretty it. good show. It really um, is. What were we talking about? We were Just talking about the I, music in the sitcom formats before I interrupted. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, the uh, yeah the music was just really good. Yeah, they, they they did their research. I I I don't know who had the idea to do this. Um, and and we kind of alluded to it in 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 the uh, in the intro here, where the way that the show was presented, if you didn't like go and dig into to. Um, you know, the articles that had come out about speculation and stuff like that. Um, the way that it was presented by Disney officially was it was going to be a sitcom style show that paid homage to various sitcoms and would go through the decades uh, in sitcom format. And so going into the show, that's kind of what I expected. And people, it seemed like the initial reaction to that was uh, it was off-putting to a lot of people. Even though yeah. that, that that's the way that it was advertised, people were like, oh, that's actually what you did? Okay. Right. Um, but, you know, uh, they did weave in through a couple of weird things through the first three episodes. Um, just, uh, like, in the, in, the, in the first one, they had, like, the whole uh, scene where that guy was choking. Yeah. Right? And then, like, um, uh, the mom from that 70s show was... Uh, was like directly like staring at Wanda telling her to stop. Yeah. Um, you know, and then they had, uh, um, the magic show. The What's that? The magic show. Yeah. The magic show. They had that, that weird sort of, uh, uh, confrontation in the street where she where like something, somebody started coming out of the sewer and then she was like, Nope. And like rewound reality. Yeah. I mean, really just showing like her power, which they hadn't, I mean, to be fair, like Wanda in the MCU before this had been kind of like not a very powerful character. Yeah. So it was kind of weird. I think it set some people off. And I don't know. I remember, I remember watching the first couple of episodes and being like, all right, well, this is what they said it was going to be great. I am wondering how they're going to tie it into the larger uh, universe or whatnot. Right. And then fucking episode four dropped and it was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but no, um, that, that was really, it, it was really, uh, it was really neat the way that they did that and the way they kind of slow walked it into the, the, the larger narrative. Yeah. And I think, uh, wasn't it 10 episodes overall and, and we rattled off, I think five of them that were like sitcom based, five or six of them that were sitcom based. Yeah. And then you had the other ones that were all like outside the bubble kind of based. Mm hmm. And then the last two episodes were in the bubble, but uh, really dealing with sort of the not sitcommy. Yeah, the last, the next last episode was sitcommy because that was the Modern Family episode, right? But then the last episode was all dealing with Agnes or Agatha. Yeah, and um, uh, Catherine Hahn was fucking amazing as Agatha. Great, to, to wrap up job. Agatha talk. Um, 
she was like the the perfect i i don't know that they could have cast that better if that's the way that it was written that she was written you know yeah. i i feel like uh, that that Catherine Hahn put her stamp on agatha if if nothing else yeah she did a great job it was really fun to watch her i mean in, in general for the most part it's fun to watch her in in basically everything that she's in all the way back to i know this is a little off topic uh didn't realize until i rewatched anchorman that she was in there for like a couple minutes oh uh, yeah yeah so we're going back and watching like old school Catherine Hahn stuff um speaking of the the outside world um what did you think of white vision like creepy dead vision yeah creepy dead vision oh man that was i mean creepy for one uh besides that i mean that's r- really like the the thing that got me was the first flash of it where she turns to him and it shows him dead and he like asks her what's wrong or whatever oh yeah that was creepy as like, shit that was super creepy um but it, otherwise like him coming out like was just part of the show for me like when he comes out of the bubble i had problems with white vision uh mostly having to do with the fact that he seemed to get his memory back at the end and then just went and fucked off while Wanda was like busy battling Agatha. You know, he has like big, like knockout drag out fight with, with fake vision, fake vision basically rebooted him. Yeah. And he's like, Oh my God, I remember who I am. And then he's like, all right, well you deal with that. I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't know, man. People, you know, deal with different things differently. <laughs> Robots deal with different things differently. I guess so. Um, I enjoyed Monica Rambeau as a character. Um, I feel like they dropped the ball on her the last couple of episodes though. Cause they had her in a in credit scene, like, uh, sneaking into, to Agatha's house or whatnot, and then getting caught by, uh, Quicksilver and then really didn't do anything with her after that. Oh, I need to go back and look at that. I didn't see that end credit scene. No, oh, I, yeah. missed, I missed that one. I'll have to go back. So it seemed like it seemed like she got powers, uh, you know, by going through the hex or whatnot, and then didn't use them ever. It was I like anti Agatha powers, basically. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. Very specific uh, powers that only work when she's fighting Agatha. Yeah, I'm hoping that there's more to do with her, and that was them setting her up for uh, Captain Marvel two. Yeah. Um, for, for those that didn't make the connection, Monica is the little girl in Captain Captain Marvel Marvel. and also becomes Captain Marvel in the comics. If I remember correctly, but I don't know off the top of my head. I don't, I don't know. I didn't know that. Um, and so there is, you know, there's a certain bit of, of, of background that still needs to happen or, or, or a reconciliation or, or confrontation that needs to happen between Monica and Carol. Um, yeah, just because I mean, the, the crux of Captain Marvel was Carol being like, Hey, I'm sorry that I left you to become Captain Marvel. I'm never going to leave you guys again. And then, you know, clearly, uh, went and, and did Captain Marvel things. Um, but also wasn't there for, for Monica's mom, you know, like her, her bestie growing up or whatever, um, you know, died alone of cancer in a hospital while Captain Marvel was out there trying to 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 defeat Thanos or whatnot. Yeah. And so that's uh that's something that that you know it, it, from a from a cathartic point of view has to happen, right? They have to have that confrontation. Yep. Um, but I did enjoy her as a character. Um, I enjoyed her. Uh, you know, really. Uh, <laughs> her rebellious nature, I suppose. Um, and the way that she worked with Jimmy and, um, uh, Kat Denning's character. I forgot her name again. Uh, uh, Darcy. Yeah. Darcy. Yeah. I thought, I thought the three of them made a pretty great team. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy Wu specifically, I mean, Randall Park, um, you know, like you said, is, is, um, a, a great comedic actor, but uh, the, the, 
just the way that he can deadpan deliver a line is fucking amazing. I agree. I agree with you. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you agree with me. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where he doesn't, it, it, it catches me off guard because it seems like he is play He's supposed to be serious. And then he'll just say something like, so like fucking like dry and sarcastic it's fucking hilarious. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. Yep. He, uh, like I said, Randall Park is just an amazing comedic actor and I like him so much. And, and even then, like, like you said, he's playing the straight man in most of this show, um, to, to Kat Denning's character, um, to Darcy and to, to Monica's character. Yup. Yeah. Um, do you have any notes about the commercials or do you just want to talk about them in general? I mean, I I vaguely remember them. They were I don't really have any notes about them though. Uh, they were weird. I went through and read a bunch of things about like, you know, the Easter eggs and stuff and it it didn't seem like it really added a whole lot to the overall narrative. Yeah. Um you just had some like interesting sort of connections and Easter eggs. Like the, the, the very first commercial was, I think it was some like fancy toaster, um, yeah. slash food warmer. And it was, you know, it was a Stark industries, uh, toaster, okay. um, that, that had a, uh, uh, a timer on it that was like a red flashy light. And it's the, that's the first bit of color that was in the series was that red light. Um, and it, it was start it was like beeping to let you know that it was done. And then it started beeping faster and faster and faster. Like the, the bomb. Yeah. In, signifying in, the bomb. Yeah. Um, you had, you had the, the Strucker watch, which was the, the name of the, uh, the, the Hydra agent, uh, Baron von Strucker. I think he's a Baron. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Strucker was the guy who, who, you know, used the mind stone to give her, to give, um, Wanda Scarlet powers. Witch her powers. Yeah. You know things like that, and and so it was cool. It was it was neat to um, just because of the way that they did the commercials. Everything. Yeah, um, the, you know the way that they themed them to to that episode. Um, my favorite commercial was like the 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 yogurt one with the shark. Do you remember that one? No, I don't. Off the top of my head. Uh, so this kid, <laughs> there's like this little little kid. It's a claymation one. Like it's like a '90s uh, commercial. Oh, okay. So, so fun. it's like, right. So it's like claymation and there's this kid like sitting against a palm tree, like on a deserted Island or whatever. And he's like, man, I sure am hungry. And this like shark pops out the water and he's like, try Gogurt or whatever the fuck it is. It's not right. Gogurt, but you know, try cool yogurt. And then it's like, so like he gives it to him and he's like, oh yeah. And he's like super excited. And he's like trying to peel it, but he can't get it open. And then he just like starves. To oh death and yeah. And away. he turns into like a skeleton or whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, what a nineties cartoon, man. Or what a nineties commercial. Like nineties commercials are weird and dumb and fucked up. Like what a great job they did. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, and then, and then the last thing that I really have to talk about, um, is is the way that you know they set up Scarlet Witch going forward? Um, you know she is now in full control of her powers, or at least exploring her powers. Um, if you stayed around to the very very last after credit scene, she is you know uh, secluded in the woods, kind of like Bruce Banner was in the uh, or excuse me in a cabin, kind of like Bruce Banner was at the end of the Incredible Hulk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, kind of exploring her powers and. She like not only is she out there like uh I think she's gardening or something, but also at the same time she's her astral projecting, like doing research on magic um in, in the cabin. I'm gonna have to go back. I missed all of these end credit scenes for the last show, last episode. So I you know, I she's very quickly becoming the most powerful character in the MCU, and so it's gonna be interesting to see uh, you know, how she interacts with Dr. Strange and, and, you know, now that they can both astral project, you know, what is that movie going to be? And it's all astral know, projection. All that's right. the time. You know, and are they setting her up to be the bad guy of that movie or, you know, or is she going to be a good guy, you know, an Avenger? I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited for just X-Men to be under Marvel again and be good. Oh, I've, uh, yeah, whatever. That's not important. 
I did watch New Mutants. Uh, I forgot to mention that at the very beginning of the show. But okay, <laughs> but yeah, off topic. I I don't really have much more than what you already said. I thought it was like the just how the kids formed was weird just out of nowhere and then growing and then aging um, and then and getting their powers. Yeah, I, I like that they seem to have like conscious control of their age too. Like right. they could age themselves up. Like they had their own powers. Yeah. Well, like there was that one scene where they found that puppy, right? Right. And they're like, well, we have to be a certain age in order to take care of it. Yeah. And so like, okay, <laughs> Like, don't you dare it's good yeah i yeah. overall it was good i don't really have anything else to soup you were pretty detailed in your overview of the show oh well good thanks you're welcome so i don't really have anything else to add that i haven't already added during the during it um all right but yeah. well then on that note we'll wrap it up cool uh, where to see it? As we said, it's on Disney Plus, and 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 personally, I think it is well worth it. I think Disney Plus at this point is well worth it to to just have for a month yep. and power through this. It's about five hours long. Uh, power through Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is about six hours long. And then catch the movies if you want, and catch some movies. Um, I I think Disney Plus is quickly becoming um uh, a a great place for, for hot hot commodity. Yeah. And you got uh, the Mighty Duck show on there now? I haven't watched that yet. I have not either. Um, All right. So that's it. We're going to get out of here. Next time, we're going to talk about the Oscars, apparently. I guess we will go through all the categories, um, talk briefly about the movies that we have seen, the the nominees that we have seen, um, and kind of give our opinion, and then also let you know who won. Um, it's going to be a, a different format than anything we've ever done. So we, we got to figure that out. Probably not going to do all the categories cause there's a lot of categories, but we'll do all the main ones like best picture, best actor, best actress, best supporting. Um, you all... don't want to do like all the technical ones that they do on like Thursday <sighs> night or whatever. I, I don't want to do like all the special effects, all the music, like we'll do some of those, but yeah, we're not going to do every, everything. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would say we'll probably end up doing like the 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 awards that were handed out on the show. Yeah. Um so you'll get your you'll get your best animated feature and we'll you know, figure it out. Things of that nature. So, um thanks for for coming with us on on yeah. this this podcast and 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 kind of sticking with us as as we rambled on and kind of get our feet back and heads back in the game. Um you know, we, we, we appreciate each and every one of you guys who, who, uh, uh, downloads and listens to our podcast. And, uh, For sure. if you could take a minute and go rate and review us on iTunes, it, it helps us, you know, uh, get noticed and helps us be seen, um, helps the al- algorithm. That's right. So we, we really appreciate that. That's, that's one way you can get, get the word out. Um, also, you know, tell your friends about us. Um, we, we have uh, our videos go up on YouTube, uh, which is really just an animation over over this, um, but but so if 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 somebody wants to you know check out our podcast on YouTube, you can check it out on the Retro Warriors YouTube channel. Uh, there's a playlist of just our stuff. Um, there's also a playlist of just the Retro Warriors stuff. So so go check that out. And I guess until next time, uh, what is grief but love persevering? Yeah. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye.